So after the last video was a bit uh, theoretical, I'm going to show you an example how we planned and executed a road trip last year at Easter. So the goal for me was to test my new Tesla in a long trip with uh, supercharging and all the stuff. And my friends Maria and Paloma, they had some friends from Spain coming over and they wanted to show them Norway. And one of the things they, were, they wanted to go to Bergen because I used to live there. So we decided to do a road trip that the first day we go to Haugesund. And then on the next day we look around the Haugesund area and then we go to Bergen but not arrive too late so we can go to the Fleuen. And then on the next morning we would just roam around Bergen and then in the afternoon we would leave to Gudwangen, spend the night there, then go to Flom and Stegerstein and then back to Drammen. So. After Nudeland we arrived at the Stave Church of Hedal. We did some uh, classic sightseeing around the church from the 13th century. And yes, the museum was closed, so you couldn't go inside. <laughs> there is also a huge cemetery around. And here I have some uh, drone pictures I have made a couple of years ago. It was with my first drone, uh, Mugen A, which I retired in 2015. After the long valley from Yartal, when you go west from Newtoden, you arrive at a little mountain pass. And that's probably one of the last time I will drive there because they are building a new tunnel. But I might continue to drive there because there is a shortcut here. Right when it goes down, you arrive there and then you don't go down, but you turn to the right. And then there is a little small road for maybe 50, 60 kilometers. But it's much shorter than taking the long route over Selio or Mont. After Rauland, you take the small road along the Lake Totak. It's the inner telemark, and it's I never seen any tourists there. So if you want to go a place with a tourist, that's a place oh, to yes. go. Let's drive down. Let's drive down. So, and uh, now it was time to eat. So it was not so easy mm. to find a picnic place. They were not it's as good. common as they are used to be in Norway. And here I have some uh, films I did uh, what was it, a lot of years ago, in 2011. How it looks there in summer. So, and then we have to climb the mountain to Haukeli Sater. This is a hotel at the top and I made a TV show, a short thing about it in 2011. And it's very popular in winter to be there and lots of people were skiing. Uh, unfortunately, there was not as much snow as I had promised. It was only like half a meter left, but you see it was absolute perfect skiing weather exactly what the norwegian think about easter mountain blue sky snow sun then it was time to continue to Røldal. it's at the bottom of a valley and then you have to climb a mountain again since uh, Tesla is quite hungry during winter, we had to charge in Röldal. So it took around uh, half an hour to fill up the battery. There you go! Oh, and then turn your lights. Come there. Oh. Then we arrived at the Langfossen, which is that super high waterfall, which is 600 meter high and you probably have seen in one of my previous videos.
So we stopped there and did some uh, watching and I flew the drone. Oh, here the Spanish people could see the first time a fjord. Before we had only seen lakes and mountains when we drove through uh, Telemark. So, and then it was time to continue to Scholt, where we had our Airbnb. And in Ölen you can see the reparation and construction of pla oil platforms which are transported there. So, and then it was difficult to find the Airbnb. Good morning, we are in, I don't know where, close to Haugesund, and there is driving backwards, very slowly. I think he's going too close to the right, and he has a long way, but anyway, he's trying his best. There he goes, come on Pierre, yes. So on the next morning I want to charge the car first, but I had to hard find the hard way that you cannot charge uh, a supercharge a Tesla when the battery is cold, so we had uh, to continue to Skutnes Haven. Hola. Okay. Where are we did it? Skutnes Haven. Yeah. Laziness is not a handicap. Uh, Skutnes Haven is known for being one of the nicest <laughs> summer places of Norway. But as it was Easter, and in Easter all the Norwegians are at the mountain, it was very, 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 very quiet. So you have to go there during summer in July, then something happens. The beach at the Okrahaven is considered one of the nicest of Norway, with white sun and blue sea, and in summer you can actually bar there, and it's not too cold. So uh, I've been there once, a couple of years ago. It was really super warm and it was surrounded with people, but obviously everybody is at the mountain now. Then my friend Paloma wanted to drive the Tesla and she also see that in Haugesund you have to pay toll roads every 550 meters approximately. Again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it's Norway. <laughs> so then we made a little tour around the Harald Haugen or Harald Stötte. It's a monument erected for Harald Hofage, which united Norway in the year 1066. Basically, all the small kingdoms and so on, he made them in one country and they made that monument in his honor. Then we drove on uh, the road E39 to Bergen. And the road E39 has quite a polemic in Norway because it's quite an important road between Bergen and Stavanger. But it has some huge ferry parts and they want to replace it with some tunnels and it would cost a shitload of money. So, and then we arrived at one of these ferries. There you don't pay anymore like it used to be with a man and counting the amount of passengers in the car. But you just pass by and it takes you from his uh, toll road account and there is a price for per car. And if you have a lot of passengers, you're actually safe compared to the old system. So some people are not too happy about that. This is one of the larger ferries in Norway, where you have a parallel entry and parallel exit. So you get quickly on and off. So 
This is quite a long ferry, just not cross uh, a fjord or so, it just has goes along some islands and it takes 45 minutes and this is an important route, you see quite a lot of also ferry crossing. We crossed here the exit of the Hadanger Fjord, which you saw in my other TV show. And it was nice weather, the girls were enjoying the view. Here you see the glacier Folgefonna, which was also in that other TV show. Yes, and soon it was time to leave again. Tesla. Y Marian sí que lo arranca el coche y quiere arrancar. Se cree que es eléctrico. I thought we were driving electric cover too. We have to turn off the car, Marian, to drive. Oh, you can just use this. No, we can. We are two more than two person. More than two? They turned off. Three. Yeah, three. Two and more. <laughs> so, and then we arrived in Bergen Centrum and I'm where our hotel later. was, but we had checked yeah. that we could park. And that was not a problem. And the hotel, we found it over Airbnb and it was so cheap. It was a steal. So it was, uh, yeah, it's Paloma. She's very good at finding cheap I'm stuff. We arrived in Bergen and I was starting the car. We went to the mountain Fleuren, which has the nicest view of Bergen. It's the first time I went in the evening, so the light was completely different than I'm used to. There were quite some tourists. I was last time at Easter in 2010 and there was nobody around, but it was also much shorter. And here's the usual views from Bergen. So there were uh, not so many people and uh, Paloma had to find her friend the goat and make a selfie. That's like the tradition now. But the uh, goat was not too cooperative today. Then it was time to drive down again. After some sightseeing it was time to look for a restaurant, which is never that simple when you have too much choice. On the next day we went sightseeing and it was uh, Friday morning and it was, I thought it was good Friday so it was completely quiet and here is one of the church and in front there is some rails for a museum tramway which is currently being built because they removed all the trams in the 60s in Bergen and they are quite pissed off that they have kept nothing. So after we had uh, seen everything in Bergen, it was time to continue. So, and I picked up everybody which was waiting in front of Bringen. And people think, oh, the Bringen is nice and so it's a nice big place. But in reality, there is a road passing right in front of it. It's actually one of the main roads in and out of Bergen. But then it was time to continue and there were some more toll roads. And then we arrived at Twintefossen, we passed by. Oh, and here we have another toll station, 47 kroner! Do I hear something in the, in the other car? Yes. So then we arrived later at Gudwangen, where we stayed overnight at the camping. So on the next day it was time to continue and we stayed, also I stayed with some friends in exactly that cabin in 2010. Here a picture when my previous car was completely new. So, and then we are arriving in Flom, which is famous train. So, we had to find a parking place and you have to drive once around and it was not so bad. 
Yeah. But still quite a lot of tourists compared to what it was in Easter earlier. Full of tourists like usual. <laughs> oh, train comes. Oh. So this is a charging station for the vision of the fjords. That's uh, one of the new sightseeing bone which runs completely electric and during uh, summer or during winter it's in Oslo. And then we had to go in Norway's probably biggest souvenir shop. Half an hour after this crappy thing. Paloma knows what I think of Renault's visits driven by tourists. So, and then we arrived in Ireland where we drove up to the Stegastein. Uh, at this time of the year, you can only go up and down, you cannot cross over Ireland's Fjelle. And here the Tesla can really shine with its extreme acceleration. So, uh, I don't need to wait, I just press the gas and I will be immediately at 80. So, enjoy the ride. The last time we subimos, subía, había un montón de Ferraris. Y este le deja esto pasar. Gracias, señor. Lo que es que acabas de cambiar de marcha, se me mueve la. And on the viewpoint Stegastein, it was actually quite quiet and there were some influencers making uh, pictures there. And here's some uh, view of uh, another time, it was in uh, May, it's with nice weather. Yes. So, and then it was time to drive down again. And in Norwegian mountain road, you ah, well, have no some... Uh, on a crossing, so you should be able to drive back to make place for other people. Yeah, but I'm a Norwegian, so... <coughs> but they are working. Yes. So, and in Ireland we were charging the car again, so we could drive back to Bremen. And now we drive into Lardal Tunnel, which is currently the longest road tunnel in the world, with 24 and a half kilometer. And again, here is a problem with the screen. There was an issue with the Tesla, which. The so headlights were way too up and blinding all the people who had to adjust it uh, later. And here we are driving up a Hemsedalfele and uh, Porsche had tried to overtake me. I could have gone into a race but it's actually not safe to do that. Uh, if you drive this road you will often see people doing uh, speeding and driving way too fast and having maybe even a race with another car so beware up there. It's not the first time and not the last time I've seen this kind of behavior. So I hope you had uh, some uh, feeling how to make a road trip and what to experience. 
And from the feedback I got from the people which were with, I liked it very much. I had a very good time. It's not important to see the most sightseeing, it's just you have a good time with your friends or your family that you can talk about it many, many, many years after. And I think uh, we succeeded. And uh, so let's hope your tour trip will also be a success. And uh, if you want some more hints and so, write it here in the comment or tell about your road trip. If you liked this video and you want to see more of videos of Norway, then subscribe to this channel and like this video.